live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering VeeamON 2019. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Miami, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Peter Burris. We're here day one of VeeamON 2019 at the Fontainebleau Hotel in Miami. Rat Pack used to hang out here, uh, was just kind of the big theme of the reception last night. Dale Hoffman is here, he's the Director of Offering Management for VMware Solutions at IBM. Dale, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks Cube. David, no, it's a pleasure to uh, be here, and Peter, nice to uh, meet you. Okay, yeah, pleasure to meet you as well. So let's unpack the, the sort of notion of offering management, that sort of people generally refer to as product management, IBM calls it offering management. So you are focused on the public cloud, uh, but, but specific to the VMware swim lane, is that right? Yeah, that is correct. So if you think about it, um, I own the VMware offering uh, solutions on our cloud. So that is everything associated with the whole VMware software-defined data center stack, but also a lot of our partner solutions, many solutions in the security space, many solutions in the uh, business resiliency space, and that's kind of where uh, Veeam had uh, came in on that aspect. So the first public cloud deal that VMware did, correct me if I'm wrong, was with IBM, was it not? <laughs> yeah, so if you just go back a little bit in uh, time, um, IBM itself is probably um, the largest, if not the largest, provider of VMware workloads um, and mainly that's due to a lot of our GTS services business. But back in 2016, this looked like a great opportunity to actually go on the public cloud and actually stand up a software-defined data center stack from VMware. So we started on that, in that partnership with uh, VMware, and started to uh, just basically grow that business. That business has been growing at about a 75% CAGR over the last few years. And then that was kind of like step one, get the stack. And then step two was, how do you get those security services in and some of those billion business resiliency services in? And that's where we started to go in and do a real deep partnership with uh, uh, Veeam. And happy to say that we started that in 2017. And we have about um, 12,000 plus VMs, both bare metal and also in virtualized uh, um, VMware. Um, on our uh, cloud, it's been about 170% year-to-year growth rate. So Veeam's killing it on our cloud, and, they and, really are. And, and your, your scope is anything in the IBM cloud that's VMware related. So it could be database correct. services, could be Absolutely. object stores, obviously data protection with Veeam. What do you think is driving the Veeam uh, IBM momentum? Well, I think what's uh, driving it is, if you think about a lot of these you know, critical uh, customers, first thing they're going to want to do is take advantage of a lot of things that you get with the cloud, um, whether it's uh, moving from a, a CapEx to an OpEx model, or being able to get that capacity expansion. And there's a whole bunch of different use cases that you got. But one of the key things to them is this whole um, business continuity. The ability to make sure that I can back it up, I can recover as quickly as I possibly can. And maybe more importantly, we have about 60 data centers worldwide. And being able to um, essentially uh, have that geographic span is a huge advantage. And also the fact that, just take backup as a simple example. Um, when I back up, I may be moving data back and forth in a particular region. I'm looking for some latency. And not to be able to be charged for that is a powerful value proposition for the customer. So we don't charge for any type of um, data movement inside our cloud. And also when you go outside, maybe for high availability, outside into the, the, the geographic reach, the same thing happens. So I think those are some very key things that it's the security, the very fast backup and recovery, and knowing that you're not getting charged for that private secure uh, network brings a real good value proposition to our customers that are leveraging Veeam and other services. So we think that uh, we're now entering into a third era of cloud, uh, where the first one was basically makers, companies that created SaaS companies, uh, gaming companies, and then people moved analytics into there for a variety of reasons. Now the enterprise seems to be getting into yes. the big way. Certainly at the large size, but that's starting to move down into the mid-range as well. Uh, your advantage, IBM's advantage has always been your ability to engage and bind with your customer base. Uh, 
how are you, how is IBM and, uh, helping to move these customers forward and what is the backup restore conversation in that process? Is it an afterthought? Is it something that's becoming more central to their thinking? How is it working? Yeah, so that's a great question, Peter. So the way I think we and IBM Cloud have thought about this is we've kind of divided the journey to cloud into two pieces. The 20% that are there, they weren't the real, I'll call them, business critical type of workloads that are going on, but that next 80%, that's where we really see a huge advantage to us. It's our enterprise relationships. It's what we do from a security aspect on the uh, cloud. And how easily we could help them what we call lift and shift and migrate things over. And then once you're there, how can I help give you that assurance that we're going to give you the best backup, the best recovery in the event of a disaster, something that can, if, if you do see a failure, being able to have a very fast recovery uh, point uh, you know, objective, and get you knowing that everything is secure and backed up and has this wide geographic spread. And even think about in the areas of compliance these days, GDPR. I mean, you have to have these data centers worldwide and sometimes they have to be you know, fixed. So, we provide that whole value proposition, I think, to those uh, clients in that, in, the, in that essence. And I think the business critical and eventually what we call mission critical workloads that will eventually move over, it's probably the best choice to be able to have that trusted uh, place to put workloads. So the other, related to that is you've got customers who are now moving and we're going to see them moving at varieties of speeds, but increasingly, the enterprises are going to move faster to do this than they've done in almost anything previously. And you've got Veeam, a very hard, hard charging vendor that uh, has a reputation for great quality stuff, but a lot of innovation, moving very quickly. How, is, how are you ensuring that there's no impedance mismatch between you, IBM, IBM customers, and Veeam and the technology vectors that it's on? Yeah, well first of all, it's a very, very deep uh, partnership. I mean, very, very close uh, relationship with uh, them. This is not a vendor-supplier relationship. This is a very, very deep partnership. And the other thing is, from a technology standpoint, um, one of our big differentiators on the cloud is we actually provide that access all the way down to the hypervisor uh, level. So you have full freedom of action to do whatever you want to be able to do. So from a Veeam standpoint, since it's really based on a hypervisor type of uh, technology, that gives us a real big advantage because let's say, David, you're using Veeam on-prem. I give it the exact same look and feel as if you're off-prem, and I essentially make that data center look like an extension, like it was just in the next uh, uh, building. It's just another you. group, it's just another, another pool group. of VMs. Uh, absolutely, and that whole control and management of that gives you extreme flexibility that you really can't get in any other uh, uh, type of cloud. I like to say that you can come in and custom build your infrastructure, your VMware uh, software defined data center stack, your services such as Veeam, you custom build it any way that you want. And it's like leasing a car. After you custom built that car, we hand you the keys, it's client managed, you go out and do whatever you want with that, and if you don't like it, you can turn those keys back in because we just do things not on a long-term commitment, but on monthly uh, commitments and, and I such. And I want to uh, maybe drill down on that a little bit, Dale, sure. and try to better understand um, some of the flexibility that I'm inferring from your statement. So you, you're a mainframer. You remember the days of uh, 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 SMS. And one of the things about it was that I could set policy for data protection for backup based upon the workload. I could say back this up you know, once a week or back this up every day or every hour or what it was. I had a granular level of capability. It was mainframe, so it was you know, big stuff. A lot of the challenges within certainly the mid-size and smaller businesses, it's like one size fits all. This has been a you know, yes. problem for everybody for years. Danny Allen this morning in the analyst and media session was talking about. This is uh, the products guy here at VM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, talking about the ability to sort of set granular levels, uh, the pressures of RPO and RTO, and, and, and I want to sort of test 
how challenging it is to do that by workload or by application and how IBM and, and Veeam are supporting that. How complicated is it? Are your clients doing it? Or is it still kind of a one size fits all world? I wouldn't say it's one size fits all, but what I would say is by giving the clients full control and having the freedom and the flexibility to do things that they want, the tight integration of this Veeam technology into the vCenter uh, console and such, it gives them the ability I like to say, do it at your own pace. Do it when you want to. Even something as simple as, let's say, managing VMware and patching it. Instead of having somebody else do it for you at their pace, we essentially allow you to do it at your pace when you want to. And it's the same thing with the uh, backup. You do it when you want to, at your frequency, what regions you want to go, or your whole geographic spread. And we try to provide the maximum flexibility and control to our mutual clients to enable that. And, and on the automation scale, or you know, the, the nine inning game of automation, where, where are we? How, how automated can I make that? But more importantly, how, how fast are customers adopting that sort of automation scenario? Yeah, so your experience when you come into our, uh, our cloud, and essentially you click on I want to go to the cloud, you click on the VMware offering, it's a very simple menu. You pick your infrastructure, compute, network, storage. I'll keep it simple for now. You pick your um, so software-defined data center stack, and we even enable um, a BYOL. And a lot of people have their own vSphere uh, licenses. We enable them to go in and insert their key, which is a cost advantage to them. Then you pick your partner services and such. So you pick your Veeam, and then you can go in there and say, well, where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it into um, vSAN, do I want to put it into a file-based uh, storage? And I think what we're really excited about is we just recently announced being able to put this into IBM's cloud object storage. And that's huge because if you think about it, we all live in this area of regulatory and compliance and you can't throw anything away and the data is just exploding all over the place. So having that ability to put it into a lower cost uh, storage and all automated and essentially Veeam can essentially point to any of those multiple storage tiers. It gives our customers a big advantage so that they can essentially, I'll call it, right tune what they want to do and where they want to do their backups. So they want something there quick, or are they saying, ah, oh, you know, that could be a cold vault. I can keep that out there for a while. When I need it, I'll go back and get it. So a lot of flexibility on storage options, a lot of flexibility on the pricing, but Veeam essentially is that powerhouse behind it that's actually interfacing that VMware world, as well as on the bare metal side, over to those various levels of storage. So Dave, in answer to your question, where are we in that nine innings, I would have said, Bottom of the first, one out, two men on. <laughs> one of them's Manny Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> because you just don't know what's going to happen next. And that's what I want to bring up. Veeam talked about Is the- Is he a Boston fan? No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. But Veeam talked about the, the, the with Veeam. And I'm wondering how IBM sees it bringing its, this massive innovation. You still are one of the leading generators of patents. In, in the, certainly in the tech industry, but in globally. How do you see IBM bringing IBM intellectual property, IBM invention to this with Veeam platform to increase the degree to which it, it, it can serve a broader range of customers of different sizes, different geographies, and different workload forms? How do you see IBM participating in that process? Yeah, let me give you a couple examples. So let me just take a non-Veeam example just to talk about some IBM innovation. So about a month ago, we actually introduced something called HyperProtect Crypto Services. That's a big word there. Basically it is, it's the same technology that we have in System Z that's used by our large enterprise uh, customers that gives you that, um, that FIPS 140-2 level four. So we are the only cloud in the world that has that technology that's on there. Basically, once you put your keys in there, nobody's going to get to them at all. And it's an innovation of taking something that was done in a different division within IBM and now making that as an endpoint service within our, uh, our cloud. Now let me give you an example of doing a little bit of innovation even with, uh, with Veeam. 
So one of the things that we are trying to do is, you know, we started out, hey, let's lay down the software data center stack, let's lay down partner services. Now let's focus on what's that solution layer on top of it? How do we add more value into our clients? So just take SAP, for example. We've just recently announced, both on a bare metal and also on our uh, VMware side, to be able to have a, we're the only cloud that has a certified SAP server in the cloud. And what we've just recently done is we've integrated and put Veeam as that backup choice for that. So now what that really enables um, everyone to do is leverage a lot of innovative work that Veeam was doing to make sure that you can backup SAP correctly. We married that with our infrastructure and our bare metal slash VMware uh, stack with Veeam as that backup and just a little bit of foreshadowing in the future, we're going to look at ways to further automate a lot of that SAP landscape so that our clients see you know, a much better automated uh, uh, solution so that they essentially, and using your baseball analogy, are going to see that full range of automation and say, wow, I think we're at the end of the game here. This thing truly is automated, easy to consume, and I'll have the confidence of the security and the business resiliency knowing that it's got the trusted IBM name uh, behind it. You know, give us the summary of, of 2019, maybe some of the first half highlights, and maybe show a little leg for the second half. Sure, what should we sure, expect, uh, why not? Leading up to IBM yeah. Think. So <laughs> I mentioned a few things about what we did in the security space already. So we've enabled, um, besides our, uh, what we've done with uh, high trust, with uh, data and key protection, we've also enabled IBM's key protect uh, services. We brought this System Z hyper protect services into the mix. We've enabled things like Cavionics to bring their risk foresight. So now we can monitor a lot of compliance and keep things in compliance and monitor that for you. We brought some app modernization to essentially help people on their journey modernize their apps, leveraging both an in a tight integration of VMware and what we call ICP hosted or IBM Cloud Private hosted to get that tight integration and such. But moving forward, I see a couple big things and I'll try to maybe put them in the Veeam perspective and such. Um, you heard me mention before about this 80% of that real key workload coming over to the cloud that you know, business critical or mission critical. We announced last year something called mission critical VMware. And basically what it is, it's two, two active active type of sites with a witness site and you essentially are moving things back and forth so if you have a failure within a region, you instantly can go in and switch over. And the idea is to give you the highest availability into the cloud. And Veeam is a very much integral part of that solution in the sense that it'll be our backup. And then since you said to do a little bit of foreshadowing and say what's coming in the future, we have a very, very strong single tenant VMware offering on the cloud. Like I was saying, you know, it's client managed, the hypervisor access, you got that extreme flexibility and control. But what we'd like to do is kind of look into a little bit more that multi-tenant uh, type of space. And we think it opens up a whole new market segment for us in that emerging market and commercial market space. Guess who's going to be our partner in that to make the backup happen? That's going to be Veeam. Great. Cool, Dale Hoffman, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Oh, thank you for having me. Some of the ways in which IBM is differentiating, not doing infrastructure service and just racing to zero, but really trying to pick your spots and uh, really appreciate your, your insights and, and thanks again. Okay, thank you. All right, keep it right there everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Peter Burris. Day one at Veeamon 2019 for Miami. You're watching theCUBE, we'll be right back. Thank you.